Uh, can you all see my screen, by the way? I forgot to ask. Yep, cool. I see nods. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm a senior product designer in product analytics. Uh, and today I'm going to touch on a bit on how we are using uh, Write to um, validate uh, some of the work that has been built um, by the product analytics team for the past year. Uh, but before I dive in into this, I wanted to uh, give a very quick intro of what product analytics is because it is fairly new uh, for GitLab. Um, so basically, uh, what product analytics aims at solving is helping a team that has um, a project or any other type, I mean, maybe a project, uh, interesting term at GitLab. Uh, but yeah, it's basically helping team uh, instruments their application uh, and also answer in data question that they may have around it. As in, for example, how do people are using my web app or something like that? Um, we're not mapped on the on the DevOps life cycle uh, schema, but we're pretty much, I would say I would point us like after monitor uh, or maybe in monitor, but since analytics is its own section, uh, that's the best place I could fit it. Um, and we are uh, basically trying to help, as I said, like team overall, but the main um, personas that we're trying to focus on at the moment are product managers uh, and software developers. So software developers is probably more focused on how they can instrument um, anything that is already on GitLab and then product managers is more how they can kind of query data and try to answer any question that they have. Uh, and like I said, it is a fairly, uh, fairly new um, stage at GitHub. Um, the team did not have any design resource for around a year, I think. Um, and they were basically tasked to build a proof of concept. Uh, and today we are pretty much in an alpha state. And I'm going to jump in Figma real quick, because uh, one of the first things that I did joining was to try and map um, what was already existing to better understand the different like pages and interaction. Uh, I'm not going to dive into like all of the specifics, but basically what you have to know is that we have under the analytics section a dashboard um, page, which is going to list all the dashboards that can be created by a team. Um, when a team start instrumenting their application, they are going to be, I mean, this page, this dashboard space is going to be populated by two custom dashboards that we made, sorry, not custom, two dashboards that we create for them, and they can then create a custom dashboard. Um, so this is what I'm going to focus on today. Uh, and then within this kind of custom dashboard, you can start um, creating charts and visualization, uh, which is called visualization designer at the moment. Um, so within this uh, space, you have like a lot of different type of metric that we already pre-populate for you uh, and that you can pick. Um, so yeah, so. This is like give or take where we are. Like I said, I'm not gonna kind of focus on all of the things. Um, what I'm gonna do though is show you what it looks like right now in the product because it's probably better than just boxes. Um, so yeah, so the current way that you have of creating a custom dashboard, and by the way, I forgot to mention that this is uh, for staff manage um, at the moment. Um, is that you would need to have another data source in your uh, GitLab instance, potentially as a project, I mean, mainly as a project. And what you're doing is like, you go then to the settings page of project A, and then you just kind of say that you want project B to be the source of your uh, data. And it basically, what you need to have is some kind of like, folder structure with a YAML file where you start um, inputting like, okay, what is the title of your dashboard the description? And the panels are basically the different charts that you can have. Um, 
And then once you select it, it should show up uh, within your list. And when you click on that, um, you, where is it? Yes, okay, I don't have the panel, so for that. Uh, but basically you start visual designing, yeah, let's take this one. You start basically seeing the different, um, like the different data point that you added in your YAML. Uh, so this is how it works right now. Uh, and again, like this was built more as a proof of concept. And what we're really trying to do now is to rethink a bit like the flow and, and try to kind of focus on how we could um, make it a bit more tidy uh, and avoid like this kind of back and forth between the settings, um, like having to create necessarily a YAML file um, to to have charts and everything. Um, so that's the dashboard part. Now within those dashboards, you have, uh, like I said, the visualization designer, which is meant to help you uh, create charts. And it's a bit more fleshed out, like you have less um back and forth as in when once you're in the space you don't need to leave it uh but essentially like it's a kind of a three column layout where you first pick what you want to measure uh and once you start doing this you uh, have a visualization of um your chart that you're building which is pretty cool um and then you can choose like a, a visualization type um yeah there you go. So this is what kind of looks like. Then you can kind of toggle on seeing like the data source, um, what the panel would look like and the code part of it. And this is where it's a bit reflecting uh, the proof of concept and alpha status because basically once you have this, you cannot, if you click on add to dashboard, it's actually going to toggle this code part for you to copy paste um, this snippet into your YAML file so that then it's generated in your custom dashboard. Uh, hopefully you're still following me. Um, so essentially the add to dashboard is not necessarily adding to dashboard and this is uh, something that uh, we should fix. So these are the two things that we uh, wanted to tackle um, pretty fast. And this is where we kind of focus on uh, read essentially because like the the space that we are in is brand new to GitLab, but it's not brand new to the industry. Like competition is fierce. You have so many many apps that can uh, help you instrument and create uh, charts. I'm sure you have at least like just saying this three to four in your minds. Uh, if you multiply this by ten, it's probably not even close to what exists. Um, so yeah, one of the things that we knew was that we also need to kind of build a whole uh, UX process for the section because it had no UX resource for a while, which means researching a job to be done uh, to make it the key uh, of everything. But at the same time, we also can't stay still and we need to move forward with some kind of minimal validation as much as uh, we need. And this is why uh, write was probably um, the best option that we had. Although if you think about any other ML years, um, but yeah, write was probably the best option we had to start rethinking uh, custom dashboards and the uh, visualization designer. Um, so this is a work in progress. Um, but yeah, I started thinking of like, okay, how can we just, you know, boil it down to the minimal flow possible so that we can have a quick prototype, test it, gather feedback, and move move up from here, basically. Um, so yeah, so I basically divided this flow into four steps. Uh, the first one would be adding the data source and trying to make it as simple as possible to limit the back and forth, um, having like to create your charts right after the naming your dashboard and saving everything. Uh, since you're working on the prototype, and we open it right now. Don't let me down fake mode. Yep. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's pretty scrappy, honestly. Um, but yeah, um, what I'm 
trying to do is really like strip it down, uh, having the like not a lot of interaction actually. Like even the prototype is going to be pretty durable, and I don't think uh, I'm going to use any like drop down or things like that. Or at least if, I mean they're going to be there, but they're not going to be uh, clickable. Uh, but yeah, basically the first step would be uh, to pick a data source. Uh, either using an existing GitLab project or uh, uploading any like XLS or JSON file. Um, and hopefully this is kind of like populate your app. Um, and you, that's the next thing. Uh, step two would be creating your visualization. So it's using the same concept as uh, what is already in the proof of concept, but just relaying out things a bit. Um, again, like all of these drop downs, they're pretty fine. And I think it's going to go for the very, very first prototype. I think it's going to go like this in user testing. Um, cause I'm really curious just to hear like what people think about, you know, just the overall structure or just like creating a dashboard, creating a visualization. What does it mean to them? What would, would they like to do with it in the end? Um, so yeah, so pretty scrappy. And like I said, work in progress, uh, step three would be reviewing, saving, naming. And then the last part of the flow would be to kind of show you your new dashboard. Um, so yeah, that's the overall ID. Uh, I have a lot else to say, like I said, work in progress. So yeah, interior questions, thoughts, feedback, and concerns. You said. Thanks, Kevin. That was a nice overview of the plan. Um, one question I was wondering, or maybe too, is the sort of the general um, method for this version of write testing? Like how many participants are you going to start with? When are you going to start evaluating the UI to make changes before your next participant? Like how are you, yeah, what's your um, plan for that? Yeah, this is kind of happening in the next two weeks. So three, uh, to answer your first question, <laughs> three people, uh, external participant. Um, it seems like we already have a pool of participants um, to pay from, but that's pretty cool because um, it's going to save us a lot of time with recruiting. Um, and then afterwards, we're just going to follow up um, whatever is in the handbook, to be honest, I don't remember it right. Because um, I've never done right at GitLab before. So I'll just follow that. Does anyone else have any questions, concerns? Uh, I don't know. I couldn't figure out how to formulate it in a question, but I see Nick Brandt on the call. I, I find the sourcing of the data to be interesting in the way that collections, uh, the plan team is working on collections, so the sourcing of the data here is an interesting approach. It seems like a follow-up conversation might make sense there. Uh, for the way you're sourcing the project from another project, mm -hmm. um, it, that's a problem that that is that has come up in groups and projects and and plan in particular lately. So, like I said, I didn't really have a question, but just wanted to point that out. Okay. Any one in particular that uh, you think Kevin should talk to? Uh, Nick Brandt and Nick Leonard and myself. Be great to have a follow right. conversation in that order, by the way. Cool. Any other questions? Um, I joined late, but I just wanted to say that um, I've done some competitive analysis um on custom dashboard widget creation so if it's helpful i can drop the link to my mural um where i've where i've done those i don't know if competitive analysis was part of the process here no no definitely not so it would be helpful um it was it was part of the process like a while back when they kickstarted their group but i don't think it's as thorough as you may have done it uh, using our process. So yeah, happy to have a look. Cool. I'll put it in the agenda. Thanks.
Anyone else? Christy Stair. All right. 